Hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome to Hanging on His Words. My name is Ken Heidebrecht, and tonight it's going to be a fun episode. I get to have a couple awesome brothers join me uh, to talk about, I would say, probably a pretty controversial topic, um, something that we're all familiar with, and that's the topic of hell. Um, yeah, I'm sure even just hearing that word makes some people shudder. You know, I have no idea. Everyone experiences that word differently. Uh, I know I did. For many years of my life until i actually studied out the concept of hell and uh just the underworld in general and so we're going to be discussing that tonight all right i'm going to play a little clip of um brother michael keith he's one of the two brothers josh and michael keith from founded earth brothers he uh he made a video a little while back and i'm just going to play a little snippet of it before we let them on here some scriptures here and look at look at the bible as a whole what does it say about the fate of the wicked because god is a loving god and, and we have this relationship with god that's it's kind of confusing because they say god loves you but if you died a sinner you're going to burn forever you're going to be tortured for day in and day out forever you know we how do you how do you say somebody loves you but if you died just like you are he loves you as a sinner but if you died today you'd burn forever and that's you know, if that's what the Bible says, then we can explain it and try to figure it out and try to wrap our minds around it. But if the Bible says something different, then that's a very damaging lie to present to Christianity. Yes, it is. It really is. Michael. How's it going, guys? Thanks for Thank having you. us, Ken. Yeah, my pleasure, brother. Thank you so much for having for coming on and having this conversation with me. It's uh it's a long time coming and thanks for that little video snippet it's uh pulls at the heartstrings you know yeah yeah that was uh i think hell was there were two doctrines that really my early christian walk that god really put me into and for some reason hell was one of those uh i was actually challenged by my dad i, I wouldn't say he challenged me but he had been studying the word and he said did you know hell isn't in the bible and uh to me that was just kind of like a crazy thing to say that hell's not or I guess our our version of hell is not in the Bible. There is a lake right. of fire. There is a punishment for the wicked. They are going to be cast into a lake of fire. But to uh, for me to wrap my mind around this idea that maybe that's not biblical was hard. And you know, years you know, it's kind of like one of those things. Once you start really looking into it with open eyes and going, okay, what is the original words? What does the Bible really say? Uh, it's much different than our current tradition. Yeah, yeah, it is one hundred percent for sure. We're going to get your brother on here, too. Josh. What's up, family? Shalom, brother. Thanks for joining us. Long time us. coming. This is awesome. It's good to finally be doing this. Yeah, we get the three amigos tonight. It's great. <laughs> yeah, so guys, okay. So like I said at, at the beginning of this uh, broadcast, we, we were planning on having a discussion a year ago. You two had it without me. It was <clears> awesome. <throat> uh, you probably didn't even need me, to be honest, but um, you did a really good job. But uh, we're, So we're talking about hell. We want to know what is hell? What did you guys um, have brought up in your household or, or in your faith, your early um, parts of your life and your faith? What what did hell mean to you? How was it presented to you and how did you feel about it? It was, yeah, it was, it was terrifying. Was drunk, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we used to set and somebody gave us a video. It was called, I think it was Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Do you, do you remember that, Michael? Yeah. When we were like 12. And essentially, you could be a believer and all of a sudden you're like you're you sin and then you're on an airplane ride. It crashes and you wake up in hell and you stay there for eternity and you burn. And 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 that was like the whole premise of this video. And then the guy that didn't sin that day died and he went to heaven. You know, and there's the gates. And so it was yeah. like this contrast. And I remember just being in fear. It was like it was really hard to get a relationship with the most high because I had that fear of like, yeah, I, I want, you know, like. This this guy does he really love me? If that's how everybody's treated, and <clears throat> it, it was tough trying to, to fathom that. But fortunately, our dad came along, like Michael was saying, and and really explained us explained it to us really well that that's not the fate of the wicked; they perish. And so that was a good a good starting point to get us like this was back before college when we figured this out when mm -hmm. he told us this. And so as we progressed, we ran into those false teachings. I mean, we had in college a guy on campus and i watched atheist and and even believers almost like want to walk away from a relationship with the most high uh because of a guy saying if you've got long hair you're going to burn in hell forever if you've got this trait and he was he was like pointing people out 
He's like, you, you're a sinner. You're going to burn forever. I mean, like you could tell he was yeah. like demonically charged and he was just going out there with this false teaching. And it was everything I could do to not just get in this guy's face. But uh, yeah. I just sitting on the judgment seat of Christ. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it's yeah, it's 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 wild, man. Um you guys ever seen anything like that? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Everywhere. That's around here. That's probably down the road from my house. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, this is so cringy to me, you know. Um, yeah. But at the same time, this is what I believed for, for many years of my life. You know, I, I grew up in a traditional Protestant um, upbringing, and it was heaven or hell. You know, you, you die, you go straight to heaven or hell if you're a bad person and so you know i did not question this for a long time and it probably wasn't well i'm gonna say do you guys remember the movie constantine i don't know if you ever saw that or not with keanu yeah. reeves mm -hmm. long time ago yeah so not that i'm recommending it to anybody but it's just i watched it like i don't know when it came out in 2008 maybe or something like that but there's a scene in there where keanu reeves is playing this character named constantine and he he can gain access to hell hmm. or, you know, what, what most people think is hell. Right. And so he, he goes there and it's this like arid windy dust storm of like fire clouds and like fires everywhere. Hmm. And it's like smoke and there's people screaming and there's demons with like half heads wow. and like, just a horror show. Right. And he's like traversing through it. And I, I don't, I don't remember how old I was. I was probably a teenager or something like that watching this. And I was like, Whoa, is that really what God created? Like, is that obviously, you know, Hollywood, I, I already knew Hollywood kind of has like a, a poetic license to kind of like, you know, make things seem the way they want it to. Not that it necessarily has to be accurate or anything like that, but it, it put it in a visual for me in a way that I, I had never really considered. And I'm like, man, what is hell like? Is, is hell really like that? Because that, that seems really um, distasteful. You know, if, if, if I believe in this God and this is what he, he's created for people who just didn't know Jesus, right? Because that's, that's, that's what I was brought up understanding is that if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't declared him with your mouth, even if you're, you know, someone who's a good, good person, you know, does good things for your community and et cetera, et cetera. But you just, you didn't profess the name. You didn't do anything. You're going straight there and you're going to, you're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever. And so yeah, I think it was that that moment in my life when I, I saw that um, that movie, and I was like, "Gosh, I don't know. Like, this is is this really what I believe?" But I didn't investigate because I was still so young in my faith. I just remember it rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, "I can't, I can't trust that this is truly what God created," you know? Because the Bible is relatively um, non-descriptive if you want to put it like that, of such a place, right? We get the lake of fire. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth, which might not even apply to this whole thing, but that that's, you know, we get just the very just basic stuff. And then you get um, Luke 16 with the, the parable, right, of rich man Lazarus. And, um, or so I thought, right? I'm thinking that this is hell, right? Because the, the flames lick at him and he's in torments or whatever. And he sees the guy across the chasm and he's like, hey, yeah, like I'm, you know, I need some water, right? Just a little bit of drop for my tongue. It's so hot here. And that's that's pretty much all you get. Um, but yeah, it uh, it bothered me. It bothered me, guys. <laughs> yeah. How, how, what was your breaking point with this? Um, My breaking point would have been probably around the same time that I looked into biblical cosmology. It actually would have been a couple of years before that, I would say. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was as soon as I started really researching the underworld and, you know, that there's a firmament above us and Yahweh and his angels and all the other angels are up there. Um, and how the scriptures talk about there's compartments within the heart of the earth and, um, you know, just understanding what the ancient Hebraic, model looked like in the minds of these people who wrote scripture like they un they understood that there was there was this compartment below and so i was like wait okay now is that hell is that where they burn forever or what and so yeah i just the more i looked into um 
just cosmology and, and the creation and studying all the scriptures about creation, I got intrigued, you know, what's below us, you know, we got this firmament above us. That's sweet. And we know Yahweh's up there and there's multiple firmaments, etc. But what's below us, you know, scriptures aren't silent on that. There's, you know, there's things that they say that uh, exist below us. So I had to know what that was. And as soon as I started delving down, down that area of research, I came to the conclusion, okay, Lake of Fire is a separate entity that is used to destroy utterly right and mm -hmm. and but then there's a holding cell also for for people that's that's what i believe now michael i know if i recall correctly um watching you guys discuss your uh, conversation last year um i'm not sure if you exactly I, I don't know where you landed with that i remember josh was bringing up some stuff <clears throat> with regards to uh sheol and and the souls going there and you were kind of giving yeah. a look like uh, no. yeah i really <laughs> i think to me i think one of the big uh stumbling blocks was i always want to make sure we're not applying our understanding like a later development to an old word and uh originally i thought what if sheol only means grave or in the ground um or any place where a dead person is but I think reading the book of Enoch and this me and my wife have been going back through it again. Uh, before I read the book of Enoch, I think I didn't fully grasp the idea that there was a place that, you know, where the dead are kept like a, a holding place because the new Testament, the old Testament talk, I think Paul, Paul says they sleep and then they're going to raise again. And we hear verses say things like there's no thought in the grave and things like that. So I thought, yeah. what is it? You know, where do you go? What is it like? Is it just a blink? Like you, you know, you're, you're dead and then you wake up and it's the judgment. Yeah. You know, the, there were a lot of questions. I think things that I would, I couldn't really fill in the blanks, but now really going back through the book of Enoch, it seems like a lot of that missing information is there, you know, things that we really don't get a full picture of. And Josh talked about, um, what was it? Uh, Jonah, when he was in the well and he said from mm -hmm. Sheol and, you know, to me, I'm like, I don't want to read something into that. That's not there, but I think if you look at it in the context of Enoch, it kind of makes more sense. Uh, yeah. What that place is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes, it definitely makes more sense. Enoch is a game changer. I mean, it, yeah. if you're, if you're the enemy, the adversary who's trying to confound the minds of men and, and really, you know, distort truth, you're going to want to remove books like Enoch for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Cause like you said, in this 22nd chapter of that, that book, it, it flat out tells you like Abel was there crying out in Sheol, right? And it talks about how there's a partition within the compartments to keep the, you know, the souls of the unrighteous and the souls of the righteous separated, but within this area, right? And yeah, and so it made more sense to me when I read um, what was it? Hebrews 11.4, where it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he was approved as being righteous, God approving his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. So in that 22nd chapter of Enoch, Abel's down there basically saying, Yahweh, like, avenge my blood. Like, so I'm like, well, is this is this a link here? How is Abel still speaking? Well, yeah. apparently he is because he's alive down there. And, and that's, I guess, what the saints are doing. They're waiting for, they know that the resurrection is is coming. And, and Yahweh even has to send an angel to the to Sheol to give them white robes and say you guys got to rest a little while longer. This is future saints. More saints have to show up with you, um, so you got to rest a little while longer here, and then your time will come when you're resurrected, right? So to me, it's like, all right, do I take this as poetry, as allegory, as you know, hyperbole? I don't mm -hmm. think I want to. It, it seems like there really is this continuum of life, right? And I this isn't really the discussion that I want. I mean, we could go there. Yeah. Um, but it all kind of blends together, right, Josh? I mean, it, it blends with what hell, Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, Lake of Fire, all of it. I mean, it's it's all yeah. kind of intertwined topics, right? Yeah, it, it blends together because it says hell's going to be cast into the Lake of Fire. How can you cast something that is allegedly the Lake of Fire that's going to be burning forever into itself, into another uh, form of destruction? And your video, uh, it was Voices from the Grave. Was that what it was called? I can't remember the exact name. Yeah, yeah. There um, yep. Me and my wife, we watched that on vacation. And that changed my worldview. When I went back to the Bible, I was like, um, my view on this topic, I already knew, you know, that this eternal punishing, you know, death is an eternal punishment, but an eternal punishing, um, that aspect of it, I knew that was a lie. 
And I'd already read Enoch and heard about sort of the holding places and I was, had some confusion. But when I watched your video and you, you brought the connection in with Jonah, it really made a lot of sense to me because, you know, Jesus says he's going just like Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. So must the son of man be in the I think it says the heart of the earth. And I'm mm -hmm. like the heart of the earth. Where is he going? Well, in I think it's first Peter chapter three. They're talking about the Messiah saying that he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Yeah. And so you've got these spirits in prison and you can say, Oh, well, those are prisoners. But no, there were no prisoners that were locked up back in the days of Noah that are still in prison. Like these are spirits that are bound. It, it sounds like in my opinion in uh first Peter chapter three, uh, 17 through 20. And, uh, and it's talking about him going to the heart of the earth. And then you hear that. So it's like, what did he talk about the 40 days after the resurrection? Because yeah. he had to have said something about this or Peter wouldn't have been talking about it. And it's it's mind blowing stuff. It really is um, when you start making these connections. And like you said, Jonah crying out from Sheol. When you said that in your video, I was like, wait, I thought he cried out from the fish, you know, from yeah. the, and it's like he wasn't in a grave. But then, you know, people can say, well. The grave then became the fish became the grave, or I, I don't know. So you kind of start having to twist things a little bit. Um, but him crying out from Sheol, and you said he actually died, like he was brought back, like Lazarus. You know, like that is mm -hmm. that's pretty. That changes that whole story to me. Like I pictured the cartoon uh, version of him in a well with a little fire, you know, surviving. Yeah, like, yeah, like a fire. In Nokia? Nokia? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Nokia. You see, like the rib cages of the whale. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, that was my imagination for years, even as a grown up. And I'm like. That's pretty childlike. Why do I still believe that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, well, if, if God can you know, make a donkey talk, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess. Like, you you, you can keep Jonah there. alive somehow in a whale. But yeah, it's crazy. I, actually, I have a video separate to that one um, called Jonah Died, um, where it breaks down that whole chapter, Jonah chapter two, because most people just, they miss it, right? If you don't know what Sheol is, you don't know what the underworld is, um, you don't know what happens after death. Then you just think like it's all just like this poetic because he you know he gets tossed overboard he's sinking he you know he's the weeds of the, the sea are wrapping around his head he's his soul is leaving and he goes to like the, the base of the mountains and then all of a sudden he's in this and then he's in sheol and he's crying out to yahweh's temple just like we see abel pretty much doing it right yeah. and he's so he's dead he's drowned and the fish has swallowed him up to keep him from you know other aqua life nibbling on him right so it's preserving his body because yahweh knew he was going to resurrect him right he needed him to go to nineveh but unfortunately he had to drown in the process yeah <laughs> and so he's in, so in Sheol. <laughs> yeah and and so he's crying out and and uh yahweh you know resurrects him back into his body and then spews him out and off he goes so it's it, i didn't learn that growing up right and to me that's like okay that's what the scriptures say i'm gonna believe it um yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense connecting because my wife, she's gotten into those after death like that. I think there's a movie that just came out after death and they're talking about some people have these pleasant experiences when they after they die where it's like, oh, it was just like the most beautiful thing. And and in their minds, I guess they think they're going to heaven like that we hear about. Um, but then there's some that are like it was the most unpleasant, scary, demonic type thing. Like I was getting dragged into darkness and then I was rescued and brought back and I have a purpose and stuff. And a lot of that mm. stuff, I thought, man, why are they saying this stuff? All they should be doing is going to sleep and not knowing anything, you know? So those, yeah. those kind of, the way I look at those has kind of changed in the last year or two just because of that understanding. Yeah, for sure. Or, Michael, what do you think yeah. about that? NDEs, they call them, right? Yeah. Um, I th I think, uh, you know, for me, not, I'm like Josh was. That was a confusing thing for me because I always thought that when you died, you went to sleep or it was like a, you know, in the blink of an eye, you're, you're gone. There's no thought. There's no anything. Uh, so this idea that there is a holding place, like a sh the Sheol, like in the book of Enoch, when, as me and my wife are reading through that, uh, it kind of made me uh, change. Cause I think it filled in some gaps that I had never, I didn't even know they were there. You know, like when Josh was talking yeah. about Jonah being in Sheol, I'm like, well, what do you mean? The, the, the well was where he was at, you know, he was, he was in there for three days. Um, but this idea that Jesus said, you know, you won't receive a sign except for the sign of Jonah, right? He was talking, he was comparing what happened to him to Jonah. So obviously if he died and was risen three days later, so was Jonah. I think it makes more sense um, looking at it from that perspective. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. definitely. And this is something that is very, very new to me because in all my studies, I never really came across something so, um, I guess, nail on the head. Like Enoch really hits the nail on the head with what this afterlife stuff is. Not really afterlife, but I guess. Uh, yeah, no. Holding place. Yeah. yeah. It makes it makes better sense of things like, um, you know, when Saul's going to the, the witch at Endor. Right. And he's mm -hmm. he's asking her to conjure up Samuel. And Samuel comes up. And so people who don't believe in biblical cosmology and, and the fact that they're, you know, Sheol below is a compartment where souls of men go. They, they say that, you know, there was an imitating spirit that was going on there. Right. Even though the text does not say that at all. Right. We're, we're, when we read it plainly, it's like, yeah, Samuel comes up and the, the witch is like, oh, my gosh. Like, and he's like, what are you doing? Why have you woken me? Right. And then he, he prophesies, says this, you know, you're going to die. You and your sons are going to die because of what you've done here. And it comes true. And so I'm like, OK, well, Samuel. Um, was a prophet. Uh, to me, I, I read that like he literally came out like not came out from shield i don't know how that works to be honest with you how the demonic and and people who are part of like witchcraft and, and necromancy and conjuring of spirits and stuff like that how that works how they can tap into that but to me i'm like it makes sense why yahweh would say in his law i don't don't do this stuff because what's the point unless it's you're able to actually do it right it sounds yeah it sounds like it does open a portal for sort of the Ouija board um, talk to demons type aspect too. So I think it is, I think it has been used to deceive a lot of people. I think they would, you know, kings would use that stuff to go into wars and what should I do? And of course these demons can sometimes stir people in the right direction, but then it's ultimately their downfall. Um, I haven't looked much into that one with Samuel. I had to go look back into that one. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend you guys, like, I don't know how much um, of the, um, well, we call them apocryphal books, but extra biblical books like um, what is it? The the book of Ecclesiasticus or uh, Sirach. Yeah, like that. That to me highlights that that event that took place with Samuel and the witch really truly happened because the way he describes it in that book, which is in the Septuagint, right? It's always been in the Septuagint that book. Mm -hmm. So for those who understand the the historicity of the uh, Septuagint, right? Septuagint's amazing. Yeah. Go, yeah. go to the Septuagint. When there's controversial verses, go to that book. There's some really, really cool things in the Septuagint. It's older than, you know, what the King James Version came from, the Masoretic, and and some key verses there are different. It, it, it's it's phenomenal. It's it's almost intentional, um, some of the changes. It lo looks like it's intentional when you start looking at some of these different verses that a lot of people quote for the false teachings. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's very, very fascinating indeed. Um, that one and right now we're doing jubilees i think michael's doing enoch but two fast some fascinating works right there enoch and jubilee oh, yeah, sure. changing my view on just creation days i mean it's, it's powerful yeah the uh, the ethiopic coptic christians they definitely have had a pretty solid canon for the last couple thousand years you know having jubilees and first enoch as part of their bible i i, I wonder so like cool. if they were watching any of us like western people having these discussions i wonder if they're just like you guys you didn't have that in your bibles over there for all those years like, <laughs> yeah you know like it's like yeah, yeah they, that's just second nature to them the you know prophet enoch yeah like he died according to their book of jubilees he's not up in heaven right yeah he's not he's not alive somehow got a free pass to go through the firmament in his body <laughs> like yeah it, it, i mean their, their writings know that so they they understand all that stuff but us in the west we you know we've we've had unfortunate um events where men decided to, to come together and take books out and say this is the bible you're gonna have to read and uh, you know if you challenge that then you're a heretic right so yeah yeah you can't question the canon yeah the, uh even though they can canonize saints and they're after they do miracles after they die you can then pray to them <laughs> and they're canonized those saints are and so you can't yeah. question that process either it's the same process same power same authority um, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating. You're we're talking about the dead knowing nothing the other day, my, my wife and I and her mom are talking about this and you think about it like Jesus, you know, they, they say things in the Bible, like, um, he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. He wasn't talking about literal dead people, gra like coming out of the grave and burying already dead people, you know, like there's a, a difference between the living and the dead. And it's sometimes a spiritual 
aspect as well, you know, because the people that are dead spiritually, they don't really know anything. Before we were awake spiritually and reborn, we really didn't know, you know, anything really. We just knew mm -hmm. service level worldly stuff is all we yeah. cared about. Yeah, for sure. So, guys, I'm going to put this on stage here on the screen. So, Sheol, just so people know, um, the Hebrew word is Sheol. It, you know, it often gets called the grave, um, depending on the translator, but it's a strong 7585 Sheol, which is the underworld, a place to which people descend at death. And then if you go to the Strong's Exhaustive, it, just, it says Hades, which is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word Sheol or the world of the dead, as if a subterranean retreat, including its accessories and inmates, grave, hell, pit. So I, I agree with a lot of that stuff, but then when they when they throw in the word hell there as like a synonym, I'm like, okay. Yeah. So this is this is the thrust of the argument here, is like, what, what are we doing with this word? Because it, in my experience, these translators have kind of just conflated Hades, Sheol, Tartarus, the Lake of Fire, Gehenna, and called it hell. They use one word for it, right? Even though these are separate things, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think blew my mind when I first started really looking into this was when you look at an English Bible, especially the older King James versions, the word hell replaces Sheol. The word hell replaces Tartarus and it replaces um, Gehenna. And it's like, so it looks like hell is just all throughout the New Testament, but none of those words ever implied hell. You know, and that, that to me was kind of shocking because I'm like, wait a second, Jesus said, the Valley of Hinnom. Yeah. It's a real place. You know, why don't we use what he said? Why are we changing his words? I think that's what disturbed me the most about this was that there's been a lot of great liberties taken with the translation process to bring hell into the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know, and if it was there, fine. But if it's not, why are we putting it there? No, for sure. And it, it just, it stems back to the old Germanic, the proto Germanic, if I recall correctly, like there's like a bunch of different Germanic Norse, renditions of the word that that got translated to hell yeah. um but if you if you you know follow the thread back it's like hell yeah hell yo hell yeah hella and um it, eventually you go back to the norse and and they had it as this this goddess hell hell yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she's um the god of the uh, the goddess of the underworld apparently in uh, north mythology and so they've they've used that word to kind of like just like broad stroke a whole bunch of other concepts into one so it's so confusing it just it unless you unless you're using other um versions of scripture and comparing and contrasting and going to the actual greek and hebrew yourself you can get so confused you can literally think like everybody's going to hell that jesus went to hell yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like it, it's <laughs> and, and lake of fire is hell and and sheol and hades are the lake of fire and you know it just doesn't make any sense crazy yeah if you're basing your theology on an english translation of the bible you're gonna have to preach hell and that jesus went there and uh yeah i think it, I, i've heard it preached very recently at a church where somebody said jesus went to hell you know and i'm like wow that's but that's the logic behind that yeah so guys we got claw here asking josh and mike are you 100 on the same page or do you differ at any point i guess in regards to this topic yeah Slightly different, but he's starting to look into what I was talking about a year ago. We did this video about Sheol and the common things that I that I really believed up until I started watching Ken's video where he was talking about, like we were saying earlier with Jonah. And so I think, Michael, you're starting to investigate that. Uh, it's not one of those topics. He's not going to get super heated and angry. If I believe it, he's like, uh, you know, you're wrong. If, if, I, if I can prove it in scripture, you're wrong. You're wrong. You know, I don't care what... Um, what video you saw, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I don't base it on videos, even though I respect Ken and <clears throat> I respect people that are Bible scholars and have studied Steve Brian, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I really want to learn more because I think whenever me and Josh, we were supposed to have Ken on, you know, the last time we talked about this and Josh was telling me, yeah, Ken says this and Ken says this. And I, and I'm always very, very, let me look at it first because, and not that I don't trust Ken and, and his research. Um, but I like to really, make sure that I'm not being led to a conclusion, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And, uh, and, yeah. and me and Josh are the same way. We like to really dig into the scripture, go to the Greek, go to the Hebrew and, and, and everything we can find, you know, historically, did this word change meaning 500 years ago? You know, there are things like that that you really have to look at. 
And uh, yeah, I think Josh and I are pretty much on the same page now, whereas back then I would have said, I don't know about the Sheol being more than just a grave. But uh, I think really going back into the book of Enoch has put me and Josh more on the same page in that perspective um, yeah. uh, and, and listening to some of Ken's teachings on Sheol and on, you know, the, you know, the Jonah and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it really has kind of helped bring us closer to being on the same page. But Josh and I do like, you know, if we have a disagreement, we'll say, hey, let's go to the word and figure it out, you know. Yeah. And I respect both of your stances for sure. Um, Michael, I, I think it's awesome that you were just like, no, I Ken's good, but I'm going to, you know, do it myself. And I'm sure Josh, you did that too, right? You just, um, no, I told my wife, I said, that's it. We got to believe that now we yeah. got to convert or die. <laughs> no, <laughs> no we, me and my wife both were like, let's look into this. Cause that was, we were mind blown. We were sitting there watching that. I think it was like, uh, me, her and my son, he's 13. We're just glued to it. And, by the time it was over, I was like, I never thought of that. You know, it was a, it was an eye opener. One of those um, biblical worldview, you know, everything just changes almost in a kind of like the biblical earth. Cause you're using the biblical earth references, like talking about how Enoch's basically going on this tour of our creation, what we're rediscovering here. Mm -hmm. And um, that makes, it makes perfect sense. The word's very clear. It makes sense. And the um, that's why the shape of what we live on has brought so many people clarity and topics like this. It, it definitely does as well. Yeah, for sure. Be Bereans. Don't listen to yeah. any of us guys. Like, just go to the scriptures yourselves, and and you know, pray to the Father that He would open your eyes to the truth of what the matter is, and go go like that. that that's a good way to do it for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of people just struggle with like, I don't know, they have this emotional tie to this. Like, when you die, you go to like a good place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they they think of Sheol, the underworld's like, oh, gross. Like, what's down there? And that's freaky. And it's like. No, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a place of rest. It, it, Abraham's bosom, right? Which is what it, it idiomatically was called by the Hebrews is you're going to your forefathers. You're going to all the, the you know, the saints where they're resting. And it, it, I highly doubt that it's a scary place because it's, it's described as like a, a place of light in Enoch. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a, I think it's a place of anticipation for sure, because like I said, like there's scriptures that reveal that the people that are there who are well aware that they're there and know that their resurrection is coming. It's like there's anticipation. Of, Come on, Lord, like we want to be with you, right? Like we, we want to live again. We want to go back to the land of the living, but in immortality mm -hmm. and in your house when it comes. So there's yeah, I, I just think there's a when they hear this stuff, there's a, a bit of a fear behind it because it's like an unknown place where they think, oh, well, when you go straight to heaven, you're with God and Jesus and the angels and that's it. But it's unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, however you want to look at it. <laughs> that's not what yeah. the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's not believe, you know, things just because the emotions are there and we, we've been tied to it through emotional, um, you know, upbringing and teachings and stuff like that. Let's let's see what this teach, the scriptures say and, and believe it. And God is good. Right, he's not sending us to a bad place. Rest sounds amazing to me, guys. I don't know about you, but like, <laughs> I feel like I don't get enough rest. Even when Shabbat rolls around, I'm just like, oh man, I I could use a little Sheol like rest in my <laughs> life, and so I'm I'm kind of looking forward to it, to be honest with you. Yeah, and um, even even in Revelation, I was reading this, you know, thinking about the other day that they it says they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So avenging their blood sounds like they've already died, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and they were given white robes, you know, they were. And so like there was an existence going on. There was a conversation. They were wanting to know, like, hey, we're waiting. We're resting for a while. When is this going to be done? When's that final judgment? You know, when mm -hmm. is when is it this resurrection going to take place? And so, yeah, given I mean, white robes. Pretty cool. Exactly. And and Michael, as you continue, and maybe you have already, I'm not sure. You said you're roughly around the 70th chapter of first Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it talks about um now am I confusing that with Jubilees? I might be. In one of those two books, it's talking about how the angels actually um no, it is first you know, one of the angels watches over um Hades or like that underworld compartment. Mm -hmm. Like they have angels involved in those places. And um Another book that I highly recommend people study and test is Second Ezra's. There's a seventh chapter in Second Ezra's where it, li it, it literally breaks it down. 
for you. Um, when a person dies, whether you're uh, in covenant or out of covenant, what happens? And it's like both end up going to Sheol. And it's basically like Luke 16. One, you know, if you're out of covenant, unbeliever, you're on one side. And the torment that they go through isn't that you're you're being licked by flames and, and that type of torturous uh, experience. It's that they're experiencing this like deep emotional anguish because they realize upon death, oh, the most high is real. And we weren't keeping his law and we were, you know, we were evil. <laughs> we weren't doing well on the earth. And so they, they know that it goes through like seven or eight different things. Like they're, um, they see the other side of Sheol and they see that those folks over there are waiting for the resurrection to come. And so they're like, Oh, we, we missed out on that. So that's, that's the kind of emotional anguish that they're going through the pain, knowing that their judgment comes and that they just, you know, they chose a life of lawlessness, essentially, right? Whereas the alternative to that is when you go there, you're in bliss, you're in peace, you're in shalom, you, you, you're you in anticipation of the resurrection, um, all these things, right? So it's like there's this juxtaposition between the two, and I've never seen it laying out like that, except for in that chapter, like so succinctly and so like, you know, vividly it's 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 a really interesting chapter and i highly recommend people read it it's a it's a book that's been around um i think it was in the uh the apocryphal labeled apocryphal in the, in the original kjv if i recall yeah yeah it was 1611 yeah so people believed it you know it was <laughs> it was considered scripture at some point so anyways guys i'm gonna pull this back up hades is the greek equivalent of uh sheol so strong says Hades is the abode of departed spirits, the unseen world, and then helps word study says properly the unseen place referring to the invisible realm in which all the dead reside. Example, the present dwelling place of all the departed deceased. So yeah, these guys are, are making it sound like it's, it's a place you go, you know, upon death, you go there, you wait, you reside there. Um, and that's, that's congruent with the rest of the scriptures that I've come across. So then we got Gehenna. Strong says Gehenna, and originally the name of a valley or cavity, as you mentioned, Michael, near Jerusalem, a place underneath the earth, a place of punishment for evil. Helps word study says a transliteration of the Hebrew term Gehenna, the valley of Hinnom. Um, Gehenna, example, hell. So again, you can toss that in. Also referred to as the lake of fire in Revelation. So this is where I, you know, I struggle with some of their their um assertions here you know like yeah. example hell like that's really <laughs> you, you know that's that's quite the example to just throw in there even though it's a complete conflation of ideas and concepts but yeah especially when you're dealing with a place that was mentioned multiple times in the old testament and it was never none of those meanings were added to it you know it was always the place where people were going and sacrificing their children or you know, burning criminals there i mean it's just yeah. It was obvious what it was in that time. Maybe, and, and I think Jesus does use it symbolically when he's speaking. I think he is yeah. saying, you know, this is the fate. You're going to get cast into this fire, just like Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom. You're going to be burned to ash. You're going to be burned up, just like, uh, you know, in Malachi chapter 4. When it talked, yeah. I think it was. We'll get to that. They're gonna, the yeah. day is coming, burning like a furnace, and it's going to, you know, set them on fire, and there's not going to be a root or a branch left. You know, they're going to be ashes under your feet on the day yeah. that I act. I think, you know, the Messiah was really playing off of that when he talked about and i think they were familiar with that analogy yeah for sure for sure and in the book of enoch it, it does mention the uh, the fiery furnace yeah in which the uh the unrighteous get thrown into and are destroyed utterly so yeah. it matches with revelation right like a fire you get cast yeah. into it like it's it's they're not new concepts for sure in the new testament so yeah. let's go over some scriptures, guys. You guys cool with that? We'll pull. Oh, Mike, yeah. Michael, you already mentioned Malachi 4. That, that's going to be in there. This was a little slide I had um, created to just kind of be a visual aid for those who are kind of like confused with Sheol, Hades, and all the different little constituent elements that make that compartment all up. Um, so guys, if you want, go ahead and screenshot that or do whatever you want with it. But um, it's I've, I've used it in a few of my Underworld videos. Check out my playlist if you're interested, the Underworld playlist. This will come up. I haven't made the, the videos regarding Tartarus or Baden yet, so they're still on my list of things to get to. But uh, 
because those are interesting little compartments as well and they're separate from human souls according to, to, to first enoch and and others so but yeah let's get to some scriptures here so i know you guys kind of started your uh live stream last year off with this this verse right this was yeah. like the, the first right this is everyone knows this one right josh you want to read this buddy yeah it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life should okay. not perish so i don't know about what your experiences have been guys but you know, memorizing this and parroting it back so I can get my little gold star put on the chart in Sunday school was awesome, but I couldn't tell you what it fully meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does, does this yeah. verse mean something completely to you guys, like differently than than maybe you had previously understood it to mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think we just read it and we just say it, and we re we don't think. What do you mean, perish? Everlasting life. We understand that, but perish? Why is that even an option? We are always taught that you never perish you always have everlasting life it's just in a different place <laughs> yeah. but to think that that's what god loves us so much he doesn't want us to be gone mm -hmm. you know it's like you said repent wicked you know re uh, turn from your ways and live and that's what he wants us to do is he wants us to have life in the age to come through yeah. his holy spirit but if we don't have it you can't it says you know it, um the soul that sins will die and you cannot keep your soul alive you know and kind of we hear those phrases but we don't i don't think we understand them when we think you're going to burn forever but John 3.16 does line up exactly with the fate of the wicked and the fact that they will, when they're cast into the lake of fire and die the second death, they're going to perish. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, um, you know, whoever believes in him should not perish. So is it simply you just got to believe that he existed? Or do you think there's a little more to that? Yeah. Uh, according to most people, you just got to believe. That's it. <laughs> like, yeah. Just got to believe like the demons do. I mean, they believe in them, obviously. <laughs> Just got to believe. Yeah. Um, no, obviously, I'm doing a little, you know, I'm yeah. being facetious here. But like, as you, you guys know, and um, maybe a lot of my audience here, uh, you know, there's the concept of believing in Yeshua, the son of God, isn't just simply providing lip service. Yeah, I believe you. I believe in you. Sure. And then you go and you, you do what you want with your life. Right. We know that faith and works and all that stuff is kind of amalgamated into this concept of believing, right? Because you're not going to, if you truly believe in the son of God and you want a disciple after him, you're going to want to walk as he walked, right? And how yeah. did he walk in lawfulness? He kept his father's commandments and he yeah, instructed he... his apostles, the disciples to do so and to perpetuate that kind of behavior throughout all the nations, right? And so that's, that's yeah, how that's... I understand it. You know, I think the big thing for me when I was going through, you know, from the book of Matthew all the way to Revelation, when you really go through it and say, what was happening? What was different about these people? Uh, especially uh, as you get into after the resurrection, the apostles are sent out and all these people are going. One of the things Jesus said is he was sending, you know, the father was going to send us his Holy Spirit. And I think this was something, you know, like in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, when it was poured out on all these people and they received it, you'll notice a trend. It's very important to them to say, did this person really fully receive the Holy Spirit? They would say, yeah, we met this guy. He believed in the baptism of John, but he hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. So we prayed with him and we laid hands on him and he received the Holy Spirit. So for them, there was something to that uh, connection, mm -hmm. you know, that mediator that we have in Jesus, in Christ, that we have a Holy Spirit connection to God. That was important to them. And I think that's something with us. We need to make sure we're fully connected and we receive the Holy Spirit that is from God. Cause some people are just living off their natural mind, you know, and they, yeah, they believe it in their natural mind, but have they received the Holy Spirit? They yeah. The impossible struggle of us. trying to do yeah. it on your own in your own flesh. Like it says, like dying to your flesh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's so many different things people see when they hear faith works you know like it gets so people get so heated when you bring up just works you know but like i think jesus would have been stoned by modern day christians for saying you know when the guy's like what do i do to receive eternal life mm -hmm. keep all the commandments they'd be like no my jesus doesn't say that you know like but when he said you know they'll go and they'll see your great works you know let your light shine let them see your great works 
um, it was a given to them that, yeah, they had faith, you know, when they were doing these great works. When demons were getting cast out, there was a lot of faith in that. Yeah. Maybe. That was just a given. Like, they understood that. Definitely. I would have assumed. No, I, I, yeah. I believe that as well, yeah. We got a few few scriptures I'd like to go through with you guys real quick. So Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Right? This is, again, another one of Paul's statements that people um, are familiar with. But, uh, you know, when you really parse this out, you know, for the wages of sin is what? Like getting licked by a flame forever and ever, like in perpetual <laughs> animation? or. <laughs> Are we talking about like actual death where you're, you're gone, you know? Yeah, that second <laughs> death, that word that it's like a part of vocabulary for most Bible believers is the second death. I don't know why that word kind of gets thrown out, though, when it comes to this topic and um, the wages of sin actually being death. You know, like, what does that mean? Yeah. Because pe people were somebody commented in one of our live streams saying, my grandmother just passed away. She was a non-believer, but she was a good person. I'm really sad that she's going to burn forever. Like they, people believe this, you know, mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen. And it's really, it brings a lot of fear to these people. I don't see them going and having a good relationship with the most high after that, with that belief in their mind. Yeah, exactly. And it leads me to, to what I said earlier, just the goodness of God. Right. And so I think people struggle with, you know, well, okay, what about, the Stalins and the Hitlers and, you know, the, the ones who had a lot of bloodshed, a lot of blood on their hands type thing. Like they just get a free unplugging through this lake of fire. How is that just right? Isn't it just for them to be in eternal torment for eternity while we're living our eternal life, knowing that they're, you know, in constant agony for ever. <laughs> and I would say, okay, I understand that sentiment, but at the same time, I'm like, I, you know, I'm just trying to like think about the future of us being resurrected and there being like this, this perfect, peaceful world with the kingdom. And, but yet knowing that there's grandma who didn't accept and Hitler and the same flames being burned forever and ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, to me, I'm like, oh, that, I think that would bother me. I would, mm -hmm. you know, even though I'm immortal and I got the law of God in my heart, I'm different. You know, apparently you're not going to be weeping and, um, you know, it'd be a good time from, from what I gather, right? The resurrection. But are you cognizant of these people being burned forever? And does it bother you? Especially when some of them have been like rather good people compared to others, right? And so... <laughs> This is where I think, yeah, it, it, to me, it, the, the just thing to do is to unplug from existence. Anybody who was um, hellbent, you know, pun intended, on living their life lawlessly and as evil as they could, aligning themselves with Satan, with the works of the devil, um, want nothing to do with Yahweh at all. You know, those people unplug. But I, to me, I'm like, you know, maybe grandma, I don't know. Jesus gets to judge everybody, right? Which is the cool thing about when he does return to the earth with the kingdom and he wages war against the nations that have gathered themselves to fight him. There's this interesting um, event that takes place after that is that he gets the, the angels are drawing all the survivors of that day of the Lord to him and he gets to separate. He gets to divvy out the sheep and the goats, right? You get to live on as mortals. You know, because you had the propensity to actually do well, do good. You were keeping my law. You didn't know who I was necessarily, but you you had a heart towards goodness. So I'm going to let you live on. Whereas the goats, well, you were sacrificing babies and you're, you know what I mean? You were doing really evil, <laughs> nasty, vile stuff. You don't have the heart for this, right? That's to me, I'm like, maybe there's something to this when, when you shoot actually judges, you know, maybe grandma won't have to be unplugged. Maybe she gets a chance to, because she had a, a good heart, just had poor teachings all her life, poor circumstances. I don't know. Um, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, yeah. I think to me, it's, it's trusting God's ju God's judgments are righteous. What God's going to do is going to be perfect and good. And it goes back to trusting God. Uh, 
in what his judgment, his final judgment is going to be. If you trust God, that faith and trust mean the same thing, uh, biblically speaking. Do you trust God? That's where your faith is. Are you trusting God to do these things for you? If you're led by the Spirit, you are trusting God. Like you know, King David, he trusted God. He didn't go out there just kind of thinking, "Oh, I'm just you know going out here alone and hopefully this works out." You know, it was when you have when you have a trust in God, it creates peace and it creates boldness. And um, I think it's one of those things when God pours out His Spirit on you, when you ask God, "Create in me a new heart, give me your eyes to see," and you start asking God for wisdom and asking Him for things. He's going to deliver and he's going to give you that peace in knowing that you can trust his works and his will and what he's going to do and yeah. stop trying to be like, well, what about, you know, what about this person? What about that person? God's yeah. got it. You know, he's going to bring us back to life. <laughs> he's going to resurrect us. Uh, yeah. We can have trust in that. Uh, so we know what he does with the wicked is also going to be something we have that's trustworthy. Yeah, for sure. Nicely said. Yeah. It, it, it makes me feel good knowing that, that responsibility is not on me you yeah. know that's 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 been given to the son he's been given a lot of roles right and so he gets to judge the hearts of men all all men and um he's gonna judge with perfect equity with perfect righteousness and lawfulness and so i'm just like ah oh, that's that's the judge we all yearn for in our in our judicial systems right and so he's yeah. gonna be doing that for every soul that's ever lived so Wow. Yeah. All glory to, to him and, and for the father for divvying that role to him, you know, because I wouldn't want it. No. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> no. Which That's means I'm true. never going to condemn anybody. That's what I'm getting at. As a, as yeah. a believer, I'm not going to condemn anybody. I'm not going to send them to the, to the fi lake of fire. His brother, Matthew Jansen says, I, I won't send anybody to the, the lake of fire. That's not on me. Right. Like, <laughs> I agree. Amen. Like, that's not our job. You know, that's, that's, that's not my job. So, yeah. But what about what this is a big one we used to get when we first talked about this? I had Michael's video, I shared it on my channel. And, but the worm dieth not, you know. I, I get I got that one a lot, you know. What about those? And the, and the people get they're, they're yeah. very they hold on to it almost like the globe or some other belief they have. It's like they hold on to that with uh, with a death grip with that. But with it is health. a difficult verse, and it I is. think it, it's an honest place they're coming from. It is, I, I know, yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. No. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they, they don't, it, you have to go back to prophecy to see what that really means, um, where the worm dieth not, because you've got that super worm, all that poor worm's in torment because he's not dying either. Um, <laughs> he's but, a super <laughs> immortal worm. Yeah, he's got this little Superman shirt underneath. But yeah, <laughs> it says in, in Isaiah, when you go back to Isaiah, it talks about that worm. It says, and, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses, meaning mm -hmm. they're dead of men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die because they're feasting on these bodies. You know, you're, you're yeah. going to have this continuous supply of food with the amount of bodies. There's carcasses there and a carcass is not a suspended. And, you know, like you said earlier, they're just continually being reanimated and brought back to life and suffering and whatever, you know, punishments brought upon them. is just going to keep happening forever. So it's carcasses. That's why the worms are not dying out. It's not because they have mm -hmm. um, superpowers, laser vision and, they're bulletproof worms. <laughs> I want to get a hold of one of these worms. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's go find these jokers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, yeah. I agree. I think it's an idiomatic expression for they're yeah. going to be feasting on these corpses. 100%. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got a bunch of more scriptures. If you're cool, we'll, we'll yeah. fire through some more of these and then uh, see where we're at here. James 4.12, there is only one lawgiver and judge. Amen. The one who is able to save and to destroy. All right. So we got here destroying again this this yeah. concept of it's there's almost like a finality to it right like it's complete destruction and is there's finality to it yeah when i first looked into this topic and went into the old testament and you do a keyword search on the word destroy or um wicked it always talks about the wicked being destroyed hundreds of times i found so many verses that the wicked will be no more they will be destroyed they will be burned up burned to ash melted like wax before fire it's like it's a trend that you see it's spoken by god in his word over and over and over again so it should be plain it should be plain theology that the wicked are you know john three sixteen perish yeah but it's funny that we've lost that yeah it's true yeah we've lost the meaning of words for sure Hebrews 10 39, but we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. So this is cool. You know, 
to me that this lends to this concept again of of when we go to Sheol and we're going, um, you know, we're we're the dead in Christ, right? So like it, we're waiting for Christ to raise us from the dead. Our souls are being preserved um, in a sense, waiting for Him because of the <clears throat> faith that we had in Him and and the deeds. Um, while we were in the land of the living and so when we do those things we couple those things together it's preserving it's keeping our soul alive and not having to be tossed into the lake of fire does that make sense yeah, yeah. and and you know the inverse to that would be we're not those who shrink back to destruction so destruction is that it's the lake of fire you're you're gone you haven't preserved yourself in a way um to attain to that day of the Lord when when we're made perfect and our souls are raised out of Sheol and are given that immortality. So yeah, and I, I think this, the idea of an immortal soul is a topic that I think a lot of people struggle with because we all thought we had a soul and it could live forever and it would live forever no matter what. But soul has to be preserved. You know, yeah. that breath of life that God gives us, our life has to be preserved. And there are people who can't preserve their soul or cannot keep their soul alive, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that that topic does come up from time to time. This this immortal soul belief, and I, you know, I get lumped into that category by people sometimes. And it's like, well, so this is what I believe, right? When Yahweh puts his um, ruach into a human being and they become an afesh, a soul, like like a life giving individual, um, only he can destroy that by the lake of fire. So it can be destroyed. So technically, it's not immortal because it can be destroyed. But he's the only one that can destroy it in the lake of fire. So it can live. It can it can go into this intermediate state of, of you know, animate, suspended animation, if you want to call it that, in Sheol, waiting for him to either destroy it fully, get rid of it, or raise it to life into immortality. So that's, that's how I understand it. So I'm like, eh. Am I someone who believes in the mortal soul? Like, no but yes like it's not you know there's there's some nuances to it so this next uh this next passage here psalm 21 8 to 9 your hand will find out all your enemies your right hand will find out those who hate you you'll make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger yahweh will swallow them up in his wrath and fire will devour them all right so here we get a little more you know detail on this wrath that includes fire and words being used like devouring right it's it's not like again it's not like you're burning and then it's like and then he puts the flesh back on and then he burns it again <laughs> it's just devouring yeah you know? thank god for that because that's to me that's so weird you know like it's but you know that's that's traditional christianity for you they got a lot of weird stuff and we're that's that's our goals right bro Bros, we're we're trying to yeah. buck against that stuff. Yeah. Set the record straight. Yeah. Psalm sixty eight two. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As as wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish before God. Exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I like how they use, you know, the analogy here is of the wax melting before the fire. Wax doesn't reanimate, doesn't come back and <laughs> And you know, remelt. So it's great. Yahweh keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Psalm 145 20. So don't be one of these wicked people, folks. Just align yourselves with the God of all creation. He can he can keep you alive forever, right? That's the good news. That's the message of the gospel, kingdom of God. It's you know, guys, when I was young, I I had a fear of dying. Like I was like, I I I like life. I'm, this idea of dying um, to me was quite fearful, right? And it's mentioned in scripture how how men are burdened with this fear of dying, right? But the good news is, you know, as our prototype, our first fruit <clears throat> brother Yeshua, he got to take on the resurrection. He and he's been given that role to resurrect us as well if we believe in him and, and trust that he will do that, and we, you know, obey the covenant commands and align our lives with the Creator. I mean, why? That's to me, that's a no brainer. You know, I'm going to do that because I, I like life. I want to continue living. Yeah. And wait for that. Just be excited waiting, you know, hopefully to hear that trumpet, trumpet of God blowing like that resurrection, that yeah. first resurrection. 
the first one. There is no one before the first one. There's just that first resurrection where <laughs> we're awaiting. Yeah, exactly. With excitement. All right, so now we're in the book of Isaiah. We got a couple out of here. Isaiah 1, 28. But transgressors and sinners will be broken together, and those who forsake Yahweh will come to an end. Finality. So this one I pulled up in the Septuagint, you guys, because um, it is different in the Septuagint. It doesn't add the last uh, few lines in the Masoretic text, but it says, Hear me, Isaiah 51, 7 to 8, Hear me. Ye that no judgment, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear not the reproach of men, and be not overcome by their contempt. For as a garment will be devoured by time, and as wool will be devoured by a moth, so shall they be consumed. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation for all generations. So, again, we got you know the, the analogy here of a garment being devoured by time, and wool being devoured by a moth. So shall they, they being those who are, you know, wicked, they'll be consumed. So in my, um, in my life, I've never seen garments come back to life. You know, when it's, when it wears out and, and the moth kind of eats that stuff, that it, it stays that way. <laughs> yeah. So I liked it. I liked it because it's, it's, it is different. It's worded different in the Septuagint, which again is, um, an awesome book to study for sure. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why these these little tidbits are missing. You know, well, I have my speculation, but yeah, um, I, I highly recommend people check this up too. You know, for sure in their studies. We got a few more. Here's Malachi four, as mentioned earlier. Yeah, behold, I like the description there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every worker of wickedness will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them aflame, says Yahweh of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Michael, do you want to expound on yeah. that for us? Yeah, that's a powerful one. And I think um, I put that in my old my, one of my the first video we put out on this because it's so clear what's going to happen. There's not going to be a root or a branch left. And it's, it's kind of like when they say that, uh, like when Jesus said, fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in the Valley of Hinnom in Gehenna in this flame, this lake of fire that we know is coming. Uh, he can destroy. And that, that to me, that language, when he said who can destroy both body and soul, I think that's a verse that we kind of look past when we, when we did believe in an, a hell that was going to burn our souls forever, you know, yeah. as opposed to destroying it. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's, that's the day of the Lord. In my opinion, that's that's the day that's coming, burning like a furnace. So that's that's what you just quoted, Mike. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul. Yeah. Yeah, you're a prognosticator. You can see the future. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna, and then it's hell in KJV. Yeah. So what's what's the problem with that, you guys? With yeah, the I think the, the King James version was the was the go to Bible for everyone for centuries, and that word hell was right there. And so, yeah. what other choice did we have? It, you know, before people could go and get a concordance and look up these words and know Jesus didn't say hell. You know, it, it, so I, and I think that it's that's why I think that teaching is so embedded into our hearts and our culture. And and out here in the South, when I would go to a church in high school where they just hellfire and brimstone. If you're a sinner, you're going to burn in hell forever. And that was the reason to know God was so that he didn't burn you forever. <laughs> and yeah. it, I was, I remember being confused by that logic of like, love me or else I'll burn, burn forever. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it how street preachers go. Out of, most of them. So was that Josh? I said, most of the street preachers I ever saw growing up, that's what their, their sign was always yeah. repent or burn like your church sign. It was always, um, the flames are waiting for you. Now stop, you know, yeah. Now behave. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's not it's not a good tactic to draw people to the the good news of the message. You know, really doesn't not. sound like good news to me. No, no. All right, Ezekiel eighteen twenty. The soul who sins will die. The son will not bear the iniquity of the father, nor will the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself. I love that. Love yeah. that verse so much. 
but yeah, I mean, the first ver the first line of that first sentence, the soul who sins will die. And so that's consistent with where we you know read it elsewhere. It's death, right? Second Peter 2, 6. And if he condemn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, it's a good way of putting it, Peter. Mm -hmm. having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter so yeah again so we get destruction and reduction to ashes um you know the ashes aren't then molded back up and then you know it's just that's... <laughs> yeah and it's an eternal i like what my, michael uh, he used this language to me he said it's an eternal punishment you can't undo yeah. it it's not an eternal punishing there's a difference there's the ing on the end it's an eternal punishment yeah yeah and I think they get wrapped up in the word eternal too, right? They yeah, think eternal. Ever everlasting. Forever. Yeah. And it's like the, the, their mind is on like, well, oh, okay, it says it's eternal. So therefore it's it, their pain goes on. It's the, the burning goes on. No, 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 no. It's that eternally forever. The punishment is what they experience. You get unplugged. You're not ever coming back. Right. Scary thought. I like to be yeah, plugged yeah. in. Yeah. Second Peter 2, 4, for if God did not spare angels who sinned, but cast them into Tartarus, it says hell in the King James Version, and deliver them to chains of darkness, being kept for judgment. Yeah, so, and that word only appears once from what, when I was researching this years ago. I thought it was interesting that in Second Peter, that's the only time that word appears in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And ha have you seen it in the Old Testament? Uh, in canon, so to speak, Tartarus? No, no, I haven't. Um, it might be the equivalent of Abaddon, yeah. which is which is in the Hebrew. Um, it's a video. I'm I have so many videos I'm working on, but that's one of the things because you're right, Michael. It it seems like it's kind of a um, a singled out reference that yeah. you don't really see elsewhere. It's it's definitely it's in First Enoch where they're, and it, which is interesting because in Second Peter it's like, what's he referring to here? Right. But to me, yeah. it's he knows. Where did it come the, from? <laughs> exactly. I wanted to ask you, Michael. Uh, I didn't want to go on any um, weird tangents, but like what led you to wanting to test first Enoch? Was this like coming across scriptures like this being like, where where's where are they getting this information from? Well, it was more of like uh, me and my wife were, were just looking for things to study. And she had never read Enoch and I had read it years ago uh, and somehow listening to her read it to me. I was able to develop more of a mental picture. Uh, hang on a second. I think my camera just got unplugged. Uh, oh no! Was Michael unplugged from existence? Yep. Yeah. Still government. hear him though. This is like Sheol, guys. This this is like a perfect <laughs> analogy of Sheol. You can talk, but your body's gone. Oh, is he gone? Gone? Uh oh. Uh oh. Josh. Uh oh. Are we are we misspeaking? Is this like a? Uh... He, he's had enough. He's like, I'm done. No. <laughs> his wife was. He mentioned his wife. She probably just pulled the plug. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got him back here. Let me back him to the stage okay. here. <laughs> Michael, can you hear me? Are you are you yeah. in Sheol? Can you <laughs> What's it me? like? <laughs> it's dark there. Utter darkness. Utter. Do y'all have Do y'all have sound? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. We just don't see you anymore. Okay, I don't know why my camera is off. Uh, it just. I was muted and my camera got turned off. But anyways, yeah, my wife and I were looking for something to study and she started, we, I talked about Enoch and so she was interested in it and she, we started reading it together and I feel like I get more out of hearing her read it to me uh, mm -hmm. than reading it myself for some reason because I was able to develop this picture and it started really bringing to mind this dark abyss in Second Peter, you know, where... Uh, Chains of darkness, you know, so if we use that word and that was one thing that I laughed about when I first studied this was it's called dark. If if Tartarus is hell and it's full of flames, how is it dark? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't really yeah. make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Peter seemed to know some things about Enoch type, you know, the the events of Enoch with these bound, these people being bound and what the Messiah did after, you know, after he was in the great or after he was in Sheol or. Yeah, you know when he was. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it, Josh? Like, where Peter must have heard Yeshua tell him within that forty-day period of when he resurrected, come back, right? Like, I was down there, Peter, and, and I was preaching to the, you know, to the, the souls down there, the spirits in prison. 
and uh man i really wish that we got some more writings on that yes you know, that post-resurrection yeah that would be right really... oh, that, that that was killing me like a couple years ago i was just thinking about it i was like that's a long time period 40 days what he said stuff like why didn't somebody write it down <laughs> like yeah. 40 days <laughs> i would have been following him with a pen and paper you know something and john says like the whole world could not contain the amount of books that could be written on the things that Yeshua did and said. And I'm just wow. like, <laughs> oh, like, yeah, it's, Man, it's wild. Can just walk somewhere. like that with the perfect will, the you know, ears to hear. I think so yeah. many of us have eyes to see, and we can. We're so like excited to have eyes, but it's like we need ears too. We need to hear. <laughs> like that was the, what the Messiah did. I think better than all of us. We love having. Um, having eyes and feeling awake, but man, I want to have ears like he did to hear mm. and speak like, wow, yeah. life changing. Amen, man. Revelation 2014 guys. I think this is uh, the last slide here I got for the evening. I do appreciate you boys. Then death and Hades again, it's hell in the King James version were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Any thoughts on that guys? Yeah, that should be, that's one of the pivotal verses. Like when I talk to people about this, that's one of the first things I bring up is this is the second death. Like it's a second death. It's exactly what it's called. It's and, and so people avoid that. I mean, they don't really like to hear, you know, that it's a form of death, you know, and it's just the mm -hmm. second one you can die. You know, they say you only live once. No, you can't die twice. If you're only living once, <laughs> Like there's a second death, you know, so you don't only live once. There's a, a resurrection. Followed by either eternal life, which is a gift, or a second death. Yeah. So YOLO is actually unbiblical. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's very true. You and only live twice, but you want to stay alive the second time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So, okay, so, you know, correctly, you would use the word Hades in Greek um, in this verse, which differentiates between that and the lake of fire. Whereas, you know, most people would have understood the conflation that they were brought up on learning about hell being the lake of fire as well, but also Hades. So if, if it's in the King James Version, it would have said the death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. How can hell, which is in their minds, the lake of fire, be thrown into itself, right? Yeah. And so basically, I guess, Ken, on, in, in this verse, Hades uh, or, you know, Sheol that holding place is burned up right in this lake of fire. It's consumed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So to speak. Yes. And that's another reason, Michael, why I, I think your brother is your brother like practicing miming. Like, is he, or did he also, Oh, he's gone too. Okay. Uh Oh, did we lose Josh? <laughs> yeah. We, we lost Josh. Hey, we're past an hour. So it's all good guys. But um, yeah, what I was saying, Michael, is that, for Hades to be a real compartment, this wouldn't make sense. Like it has to be a real place in order for it to be tossed into the lake of fire to be burned. Yeah. And so in my eschatological understanding, once it's completely removed of its inhabitants, the souls that are in there, it's no longer needed. Yeah. After the resurrection, there's be nobody left down there hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> no. Right. Right. Specifically the second resurrection at the end of the thousand year reign, when the, when the unrighteous souls, which is when they're supposed to be let out, are released and brought to life to be judged and then thrown into the lake of fire. Then that compartment gets tossed in because Yahweh's like, I don't need this anymore. Now we're not having death like that anymore. It's eternal life from here on yeah. in. So it's cool, man. It's really cool. Oh, Josh is Josh back in. No, he's not. Huh. You guys got like a, a, a storm coming through your area there or something, or I don't know. We might <laughs> strange okay. things happen when we try to do live hangout sometimes. Yeah. Things just right? randomly cut out. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we can wait a little bit. To be, I, I don't want to end the live stream without saying goodbye to him. I mean, it was so nice of him to, to join us, and I do appreciate you you coming on, Michael. You're you're yeah, an awesome dude. And, yeah, I'll I'll definitely oblige and come on your your side of things as well whenever and if ever you would like. But um, yeah, yeah, perhaps yeah. we can dig more into uh, the underworld itself there, Michael, and, and and bring up some scriptures regarding that, and you know, do a full kind of expository teaching on that if you're ever if you're ever wanting to so yeah i think this is a really important topic for people to get a better understanding of god and his love and i think to me this was one of those things that really 
makes our relationship with God, if you believe in an eternal burning, it's like you follow God out of fear of, you know, the, I don't want that to happen to me. So, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's definitely, um, solidified my, my love and respect and honor for the father all the more just because it makes more sense. You know, when, when, when Yeshua says the truth will set you free, I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah. true. It, 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 you get liberated once you've actually read the scriptures in their proper context and, and understood it the way that they were meant to be understood. It's like, okay, that is freeing all of a sudden it, it's, it paints a new picture of who my father in heaven really is. So it's changed my life drastically. I know it's changed you and, and Josh and, and many oh, yeah. others. So it's, uh, it's awesome. And I welcome that change. You know, I I'm all for, for changing my life, my, my walk as much as I can. Oh, okay. We do have Josh jumping back in here. So we'll, we'll be able to see him off. Brother, I, back. <laughs> I was like, Ken, you lost signal. I think something happened. And then no, it was me. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter turned off the Wi-Fi. She said she could hear the radiation. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. She's she's six years old. She can hear radiation. Well, hey, hey, you know what? Maybe we should end the broadcast, bro and we don't yeah. want you getting that radiation poisoning. <laughs> she's heard too much of our conversations, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, brother. I, I we are coming to the end anyway, so yeah. I'm glad that we could see off without, uh, you know, that Maybe abruption of you even like that. But um, the rapture. Yeah, the, yeah, the rapture. Right? <laughs> we can talk about the rapture. There's so many things we can talk about, guys. You know, yes, we've got to, man. Our work is so much. Like, there's so much work that needs to be done. When you see all the false seeds planted about what's about to happen, where we are in time, like it's important stuff, and it's mm -hmm. very. There's it's becoming divisive. Things you wouldn't think were divisive are now divisive. Yeah, yeah, it's sad, and we're not. That's not what we're about, right? We want to yeah, no. we want to bring people back in unity, not not like an ecumenical all religions, all stuff as one and you know, kumbaya type stuff. But like you know, we don't. There's no need to divide and and use ad hominems and disfellowship yeah. and and you know, all that stuff over small stuff. Like it, it just come on, let's let's grow up, guys. Let's let's mature. Let's treat each other with love and kindness and um, grow together get those fruits on display and yes. uh, mm -hmm. it'll be a better, better community for sure for folks. So guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much um, for having us. Yeah, it's probably this probably wasn't a huge blessing, man. Long yeah. overdue. Long overdue. You guys are great. I love what you do. So for those of you who are new here or don't know who, who Josh and Michael are, they have a, a combined channel called the founded earth brothers. It's done really well. They talk a lot about biblical cosmological related topics and, and other things and so please do go over there and subscribe to them um michael is your other channel uh grace and truth fellowship is that quite yeah accurate? grace grace and truth yeah okay i yeah, haven't so. been on in a while we most of our stuff's posted on founded earth brothers but uh yeah he's We're gonna start back. getting back to work he's finally yeah. getting us finally getting in a place to where he can it's, it's been our lifestyles have been so crazy mm. um but yeah he's finally getting back to where he can start um doing ministry work awesome that's good to hear it's really good to hear you guys are good you guys are uh you know key players in this community so keep it up you know people respect you and uh you guys show you exemplify humility you know and i know josh that's a huge thing for you 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 often bring that up how we need to be humble right yeah the humility aspect of it get, often gets neglected and so i agree with you man we really do need to approach these things yeah humility the and, truth and love yeah the greatest in the kingdom of heaven are those that will humble themselves like a small child i think that man like he, he they were asking these questions when he was here and he was telling them the answers and that one of them was the greatest in the kingdom are those that are humble like a small child and Small yeah. children listen to their father. They, you know, they, they look up to their father, you know, like they look at their father, like this is the wisest man on earth, you know? So mm -hmm. they humble guys, no matter how much, you know, um, no matter how much you grow. And I'm glad to see Ken, that you're doing this more often. And you're, um, I know you, back in the early days, you're like, man, I don't feel comfortable doing this stuff, you know, getting in front of a camera, but the father wants to use people like you that are, that don't want the spotlight on them. I feel like that's, a, that's an important aspect of, the people he's using right now, I'm seeing that a lot. People that that don't really want to be seen, but they want the Father's truth to be seen, and he's really opening up doors for people like you. So I'm I'm honored to see you guys, uh, people like you out there speaking, because there's so many that want to be seen that shouldn't be speaking and saying the things that they're saying, because they're 
they're a little overzealous in putting out a false message. And I've put out a lot of false messages because I thought I knew the truth at certain times. And so it's why well, we got to stay humble. And um, if you're doing a video, like, I don't, you probably do like me, if you're doing a video and you feel the spirit's not moving in it and you're saying words that you think would sound cool and it's not, you know, whatever, like I just stop and I'm like, ah, back up, start over. Yeah. <laughs> that happens to me now more than ever. Cause it's like, I try to be mindful of what I'm saying and um, who we're speaking to and all that. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it, man. I really do. Yeah, I, I'm going to be doing this more often for sure. It's just, it works better with my schedule. Honestly, I work full time um, yeah. outside of this. And uh, I just, my regular videos take a lot of time. Um, so I imagine this man, is just so easier. The quality. I wish I could take that quality and like do something with it <laughs> over here. Like, hey. Yeah. What's up, Mikey? Mikey. Yeah, Mikey's Did good. He? I'm going to have him on one of these days too. Mike so many people, man. That's why I love this community. So many people you Bill can. Keith, my dad. That's my dad. In the... <laughs> Who's that? My dad, uh, Bill Keith. He's in the. Is this him? Yeah, that's him. That's my papa. Oh, papa Keith. Where? Good job, Ray. Right? You raised good a couple. Good... Came from. <laughs> yeah, you raised a couple of studs. Congrats! It must be awesome to have children that are, you know, leading the charge. Oh in this day and age and are on fire for Yahweh. So that, that would, I would imagine be rather pleasing as a father. So your son's doing that. Yeah. 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 He's, he's awesome. He's been a light he's been a big influence on both of us. Good to have him here. He's got to be up early too. He's got, he's one of those, he gets up at like five or four 30. I don't know how I get, I barely get up at six 30. I feel like. Yeah. Well, thank thank you, Papa yeah. Keith for meeting mama Keith and, you yeah. know, creating Josh and Michael Keith. Yeah, they're good, good dudes. Two sons, one try. Good job, Dad. All right, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two pointer. All right, so brothers, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thanks and for having will, me. Yeah. I'll remove you from the the studio here, and then I'll I'll have to say goodbye to my audience. Thank you guys so much for for coming on this evening. I appreciate you so much. If you guys, if you like this conversation and and you like these types of conversations, please hit the like button on this uh, video. And go subscribe if you haven't already done so. I appreciate you guys so much for joining. And um, all your love and support, really. For those of you who support this ministry, I you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at without you. So I really do love you guys. And, and I'm very appreciative. Um, I have a bunch of future guests to have on. And I'm not sure what the next one is going to be like right now. But um, continue to... Check the notifications on, on this channel to make sure that you're notified for when I do go live again. And um, planning on releasing one of my videos. It's in relation to what we talked a little bit about tonight. It's called No One Goes to Heaven. So it kind of you know delves into this idea about where we go when we die. Not And it, it strays away from the, the underworld um, topic and goes more towards modern Christianity and where they got this idea of people going to heaven. It kind of taps into the roots of you know, why did this become a mainstream doctrine? Where did it come from? It's interesting. It really is. So keep your eye out for that video. I'm hoping to release it. If not this weekend, then early next week. So yes, please. I appreciate your patience, guys. Um, I do work full time as well. And uh, so it, it has been a little bit more difficult to be able to do those videos, which is why I'm doing more live streaming. But uh, all that said, I love you. appreciate you. And there's some awesome things coming down the pike in terms of videos and other other content, other projects. So I can do this because of you and your support, and I thank you so much for it. So with all that said, you guys, I love you. Keep the covenant. If you don't know what the covenant is, pray to the Father that he reveal it to you. Crack open your scriptures. It's never too late to come to faith in, in Yahweh and his son and uh, to do their ways and... Uh, you can take part in the eternal life, the promise of eternal life and not eternal destruction. So there's perks to this faith, guys. Just you just got to believe you just got to, you know, step into it and one day at a time. Right. So consider doing that if you haven't already uh, ventured out into that journey. So love you. All the best to you guys. Shalom.